For more analysis on the China-U.S. joint green drive, let's welcome our studio guest, Mr. Liu Keo, Vice President at Haldor Top, so a company that specializes in green technology. So before we talk about green in particular, let's talk about uh, President Xi's visit so far and the outcomes already achieved. We've got 300 new jets in the orders. We've got the new Boeing delivery and completion center. What do you make of it? Well, I think uh, this sent a very strong signal for the continued uh, huge economic collaboration between these two giant countries in the world. I believe uh, there's a, not only on the 300 Boeing jet, but I also expect there's a lot of discussions on the clean tech, energy, and environmental collaboration between these two countries. Because these are the two areas that both countries have a huge common interest among between these two countries. That's right. We'll talk about green in just a little bit, but uh, we'll stick to the broader focus of the visit for now. So how will these deals actually drive engagement going forward? Well, I think uh, now look at with the whole world's uh, situation on the economy. I think the U.S., China both need each other. I think our economy is highly interconnected each other and also highly complementary each other. For example, China if you go to the U.S. stores, right, you're going to see right, all kinds of goods from China. And also China needs the technology, the support, the exchange, and also in the high-tech area. I just need to break down some of the uh, mistrust. Yeah, I, exactly. I think uh, especially if U.S. can release more of the high-tech export to China, that can benefit not only China, U.S., but the whole world. But uh, that kind of discussion always gets politicized, doesn't it, in the U.S.? I agree, especially now in the, in the election date. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Now, uh, now, we have been talking about China-U.S. relations. Let's uh, continue the discussion with, the, with Mr. Liu Ke to take a look at how China and the U.S. can work together on environmental protection, which is your, uh, your ex field of expertise. So what sort of China-U.S. joint action on climate change can work the best, do you think? Well, a few years ago, when President Hu Jintao visited the uh, uh, U.S., between the President Obama and Hu Jintao, we signed an agreement called the U.S.-China Clean Energy Research Center, That's CERC right. program. Yes. Uh, these are the areas, basically, the uh, U.S. Department of Energy and the counterpart of the Chinese part, the most Minister of Science and Technology, and also the NDRC. They have a series of whole program, total like $75 million each side from U.S., DOE, and from China. We have series of major four areas uh, uh, defined, for example, the clean coal, the, the, uh, the next generation of the uh, transportation, uh, and also the CO2 capture and climate change. So I think in this area, these two countries already have uh, all kinds of uh, collaborations between the scientists, uh, uh, engineers and also including some demonstration projects going on in both in China and in U.S. That's right, for, example, the, for example, we, uh, like a few years ago in China under this program we have demoed the whole 100,000 tons of CO2 capture site uh, done Dubai Shenhua Group which is the biggest uh, coal group in the world say? and basically they, they demoed uh, separate get a CO2 from the coal to liquid project of Shenhua, then pump under the ground and store it and collect the data. Even today, as of today, we're still collecting data. Like once you put the CO2 down, what's the other impact? It's going to come out and there's a lot of sensors, a lot of activities still going on. We are still in the process of collecting all this data to get the technology ready in case in the future we need to capture CO2. Now, I was talking to the climate group and Wu Tanghua was telling me that we have a lot of technologies at hand. Yes. A lot of it ready to be industrialized, but we have a lot of resistance from perhaps the old thermal power plants, perhaps from old technologies. How do we break that down? Well, I think the most important thing is that human being always, finally always do the choice based on economic returns. So that's why you have to go through the tax law. Of course, the regulation, right? The regulation has to be there. If there's no strict regulation, there's no law in enforcement, nobody bothers to do it. So first step, you have the regulation. Second step, you have the law in enforcement. Of course, third, the technology has to be affordable. Yes, there's technologies, but today, if it's too expensive, nobody's still going to use it. 
Okay. Yeah. okay. And yeah. political resolve never hurt anyone, right? Yeah, that's because there's always uh, <coughs> hurdles. But I think we need the joint collaboration, not only among the scientists inside China or US, but the side between the two countries, the whole world, to work together to resolve those issues, because those issues are bigger than any individual country. We saw a lot of deals signed between cities, city governments and yeah. provincial governments last week in Los Angeles yeah. at the China-US Climate Summit. Yeah. Do you think they will amount to anything? Do you think they're more style than substance? I, th I think it's a positive step, right? Everything we have started the initial step, but there's still a long way to go. Okay, yeah. it's a good start. Good Thank start. you so yeah. much, sure. Mr. Liu Ke, Vice President at Haldor Topso.